Just as there is a setup time violation, there's something called hold time violation. Hold time violations are much easier to solve than setup time violations, but they are harder to understand. So let's recall what hold time is. Hold time is defined as the time after the active edge of the clock that data has to be held stable so that it can be registered properly at the output. Hold time occurs because there are 1-1 one, one overlaps and 0-0 zero, zero overlaps between clock and clock bar that have to do with the generation of clock bar. Uh, because we have periods in which clock and clock bar are on together, we have periods in which transmission gates in the feed forward direction of both the master latch and the slave latch are on together. This would allow data after the active edge to race into the master latch when it shouldn't have unless we hold the data stable at the input. If we do not respect hold time, we do something called a hold time violation. A hold time violation will cause the output of the offending register not to be correct. And this will cause data downstream to be registered incorrectly and is a failure for the entire circuit. So we are looking here at a pipeline that consists of two paths, path one and path two. The output of the combinational path 1 is x, the output of the combinational path 2 is w. And in the uh, diagram, we have uh, marked t setup and t hold. They are times before and after the active edge of the clock. Notice that the data d has to be held stable for a window equal to t setup plus t hold. So it has to be held at a window centered around the active edge and extending before it by T setup and after it by T hold. Uh, in this circuit, we are assuming that path X uh, has a very large positive slack and path W also has some positive slack. So for path W, for example, let's assume that um, the, uh, the output W is gonna change. Let's assume at this point, which means that W has this much positive slack we call it slack 2. So path 2 is actually safe. It does not cause any kind of setup time violations because it changes earlier than it needed to. After the next active edge, it will also change and it will change uh, at about the same time because this delay has to be equal to this delay. So these two delays are equal and the slack will be uh, the same at all times. So path 2 is kind of uh, non-problematic and does not uh, cause a, an issue. Let's assume that um, right here we were producing a value called W0 and after it changed, after the second active edge, it, 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 it updated to a value W1, right? So at the input of register uh, R2, uh, we see W0 which then updates to W1 after an amount of time. Uh, let's also look at path X. And now path X is gonna change after the active edge, and it has a very large positive slack. And so the amount of slack here is this, and it's huge. After the upcoming active edge, it will also change at about the same time. But what's happening here is that it, it is changing before T hold has gone. And so if we assume that the initial value for x was x0 and it updates to x1, what this caused is that around this active edge for the register R1, the input did come more than t setup before the active edge, but it was not held for t hold after the active edge. It, it changed too soon. And so we did not respect the hold time at the input of register R1. The input updated too soon. What we say happened here is a hold time violation. And hold time violations are likely to occur if the path has a very large positive slack. So this is really the opposite of setup time violations. In setup time violations, we are worried about long path because they can cause the input to the register to change too late. But here we are worried about very short path because we are worried that the input to the uh, register will change too soon. So uh, what are we worried about really? We are worried about after the active edge, the data will exit this register, the first register, and pass through one and arrive at the input X 
before hold time has happened. So hold time violations happen if we manage to cross the first uh, register TCQ and manage to go through uh, the first uh, the, the path one before hold time violation has happened. So this amount of time is less than or equal to hold. So this will cause a hold time violation. If this happens, if this inequality is true, we will see a hold time violation. It's important to understand what T1 is in this case. T1 is not just simply the delay of gate 1. In fact, gate 1 could potentially have some really long delay, which has potentially zero slack. But it could have some other path within, within it, or some input combination within it that activates a small resistance that causes a very small delay, that causes us to observe this. Thus, when looking at hold times, when trying to check if there are hold time violations, we use the best case delays, not the worst case delays. We are worried about, in the best case, data managing to exit the register and passing through the combinational uh, blocks too soon, not allowing the input to the upcoming register to be held for at least T hold. So if we increase the clock period, which is the solution we used for setup time, will this solve hold time violations? The answer is obviously not. Because if we increase the clock period, then when we are increasing this distance. All we are doing is we are pushing this edge later. But the problem is that data exits after this edge too soon. The problem had nothing to do with the distance between the two edges. Increasing or decreasing the distance between the two edges is not going to solve the whole time violation. So in fact, if you have a chip and the chip is not working and you uh, increase the clock, uh, clock period or decrease the clock frequency and you find that it has started to work perfectly well, not only can you say that there was probably a setup time violation somewhere in the circuit, but also that there were no whole time violations. So whole time violations cannot be detected by decreasing the clock frequency because they have nothing to do with the distance between two edges. They are things that happen after the active edge, not before the active edge. So how do we solve it? All we have to do really is to guarantee that this input is a little bit later. I mean, it changes a little bit later. We have to add some sort of delay after the path one so that node X changes after T hold after the active edge. So all we have to do is add delay here. And this delay has to be combinational delay. It's, it's a common mistake to think that you can add uh, a bunch of registers here. That's not going to solve the, the, the whole time violation. You need to add combinational delay here. The best way to do it is to add pairs of inverters, preferably small inverters that add a lot of delay. And these inverters, you add as many pairs as necessary to guarantee that, the, uh, that node X respects whole time. So you are just delaying node X by enough so that it respects whole time. Now, this uh, process of adding combinational delay to guarantee that there's no whole time violation is so uh, easy and detecting places where there are whole time violations is so easy that CAD tools will do it most of the time. I mean, for example, if you just have like a shift register, a shift register is a bunch of registers connected in cascade with each other. What is the combinational delay between the registers? It's zero. So it's guaranteed that this shift register will have a whole time violation. It will definitely have a whole time violation. Each of the registers here will have a whole time violation because we have zero delay between them. But that's not an issue really because the tool will always add enough buffers in between them to guarantee that there is no whole time violation. Now, this discussion suggests that whole time uh, is easy. At least it's easy to solve. It's just adding bunches of buffers and this can be done by the tool without, uh, without designer involvement. In, in an upcoming video, we will discuss the difference between setup time violations and whole time violations. And we will talk about which is actually more dangerous. If you end up with a chip that has setup time violations and whole time violations, what can you do? Like, uh, is this a disaster or not in, in, in both cases?